Hello, I'm Trevor Lewis, and this is another video from the Voyager Middle School Steam Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you folks how to take a uh, portrait, and you're going to turn it into something that we can run through the laser cutter in Inkscape, or just make it an interesting digital portrait as well. So we're going to use the trace feature, and we're going to use a more advanced tracing um, by, by doing multiple traces at once, and then making decisions about which traces we like. So we're going to start off we need an image. So this is the finished product here. You can see I, I've got three layers. I've got three shapes here that I have traced and if I pull them apart you can see what they look like on their own. I used a really high resolution image just straight out of my phone and you can see it's making my Inkscape run a little slow. I also ended up as a result of having this higher resolution image um, I ended up having to use Control L on the keyboard, and what that does is that will um, it'll simplify and cause you to have less nodes, which makes it run a little bit faster. So I only have three layers here, and I chose my colors accordingly. But let's see if I can back up here, and you can see pre-simplifying. You can see that there's some artifacts happening from the simplification process, but that abstraction kind of can be interesting too. So you can see I played around with a few colors here. You can see it's running really slowly. Um, I'm going to show you a way to fix that. So I started off with grays, and I got rid of one of the layers after I traced it because I didn't like it. But you can see now it's it's I'm taking off the Control L here, so you can see I get more detail. So let's look at this this dark gray layer right here. If I do Control L on the keyboard, it takes a while, but it's going to make it so that there are less nodes. When you have the select tool and you have selected it, you can see that there are 8,368 nodes. And the nodes are the individual little dots that control where the path goes through. Okay, If I undo my control L and then select, you can see it's taken a long time here. It's going to show me how many nodes I had before. And since I have four layers, each one of these layers could have all of these nodes. And it's kind of really hard for Inkscape to keep track of. I'm running a 0.925 version of Inkscape. But if you're on 1.0, it says that it handles um, slices with a lot more nodes better. I might have crashed it here. We'll see. Um, but it, when I reduced the nodes, it reduced them by a, a large factor. So I, I had tens of thousands of nodes and I went down to just thousands of nodes. So that really does help it work a lot faster. But I'm going to show you how to avoid this um, because when we take these portraits on our phone uh, you can see that it's going to cause lots of problems sometimes in Inkscape and the laser if you're going to cut, run this through the laser all these little dots, the laser has to draw each one of those and depending on what you're cutting this out of it can actually even start a fire um, because it's doing so many of these little dots. So I'm going to show you some ways to simplify which is going to make your life a little bit easier. So yeah, see, there you go, 53,000 nodes, and it went down to 8,000 after I did Control-L. Okay, so let's do this a little bit simpler. So the reason I'm getting this level of detail is because I'm using a full-resolution image from my phone. So let's go ahead, and we're going to get rid of everything. And the way I did that was I took a picture on my phone, and I used Google Drive, and I imported it into Inkscape. Here's what I'm going to do instead. Here's the image from my phone. I, I got it in here from uh, using Google Drive, but I just have it open right now in the Photos app, the default Photos app. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to downsample it using the snipping tool. So right now my screen is not high enough resolution to show all these pixels. And so whatever pixels this is showing right now, if I use the snipping tool and I do a new snip, it's going to only capture the pixels that are on the screen, which are limited. So that's a much smaller photo. So let's talk a little bit about composition right now. You can see I, I'm focused on the face. Uh, I'm kind of ignoring the background. It's going to get abstracted anyway. I'm not looking right at the camera. I'm not smiling. These are things that are going to make your portrait maybe create more of a mood. And that's maybe what you're after. So I'm going to paste this. It automatically copies it when you take the snip with the snipping tool. And you can see before my image was this big on the canvas. You can see now it's about the size of the sheet of paper, a little bit smaller. So that's a lot less resolution, and you'll find that when you're using Inkscape, it's going to go a lot faster. So I'm going to right-click and choose Trace Bitmap. Um, if you are using the uh, the version of uh, Inkscape that is inside a Chrome browser, you can't do this because it's a little too computation 
uh, heavy. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to draw right on here using the Bezier Curve tool to make your portrait. But I am going to use Trace Bitmap, and I'm going to show you some of these more advanced features. So you can see the last version I had was horizontal, but now I'm going to hit Update here. Now it says Brightness Steps, and I want to do three scans. It's going to give, end up giving me um, three levels of brightness that way. But you can't really see it in the preview. I like colors for previews better. Colors, we'll group them by color. Um, if I only do three colors, it's not a whole lot. And you can see it's already starting to abstract things a bit. So I got to decide, and then this is not the final product, right? I'm going to choose my own colors, and I can choose to get rid of layers. You can also do it in terms of grays. And I think you saw the way I took it apart in the last one. Um, what That's maybe more for the laser. Uh, if you uncheck where it says stack scans, it'll make it sort of, it's more like a puzzle versus like layers that you're going to um, glue on top of each other. So I like stack scans if I'm running this through the laser. I would try out some different layers to see what kind of detail I get. Um, I don't want to lose this detail in the eye. So you see how with only four scans and grays, I don't have the detail of the eye. But if I go colors with four scans, um, I still don't have that. So I might need to go up a little bit, have a few more colors. You can see that way I get the blue back. But um, if I, I'm really going to be focused on the face here for most of this. Okay. So now what I can do is I can hit OK, and what will happen is it'll create a group of paths, and it'll put it right on top of my image. So here's my group of paths. It's not just one object. It's not just one pathway. It's a bunch of different pathways stacked on top of each other in a group. So if I want to be able to pick this apart and change some things about it, I can double-click it to get inside the group, or I can just right-click and choose Ungroup. When I ungroup it, I'm going to get several different things, but the, since they're all about the same size, you can't really tell, but except for right up there, maybe you can see that some of them don't go all the way to the top. But if I, if I click off to the side so nothing is selected, and I'm going to hold Control and zoom back here a little bit, I can take these apart. So sometimes what I do with a project like this is I take these apart and I start looking at them, and I go, okay, well, which ones are interesting? Well, um, I'm, I might, I'm probably going to need a, a background layer, but I'm not going to laser cut that. That'll just be a piece of paper. And then I'm looking at these, and I, I think I probably don't need all the, these blinds in the background, so maybe I get rid of these two layers. I'm just looking at these layers. So now, um, are all these layers necessary? And I can line them back up. I can use the, the corner to snap. I can zoom in, too. You're, you know, if you're going to laser cut these all separately you're going to have to do something like this eventually where you line everything up because you're going to be hand gluing everything back together. And you can see I'm having a, a little bit of a hard time lining these up because of the updates are going kind of slow. But I can also use the arrow keys on the keyboard to nudge it downwards so as I get things back into the right place. Um, the other thing to consider is about scale. If you're going to laser cut this, some of your details will get lost if they're too small. Like this eye, this part right here, this piece is going to be really important. But if I laser cut that on my laser and I end up with a piece, if you look at my fingers down here in the corner, if it's small enough, it's going to fall through the honeycomb and I'm going to lose it. So you need to make sure that you're thinking about how big each piece is when you're making these decisions. And, you know, you're probably not going to get all these little tiny pieces unless you do a really large scale project or you do something to prevent those little pieces from going away. Okay. Now, this is trying to match the, the colors from my photo, but I maybe don't, I'm not interested in that. But I do have uh, some gradations here, so I want to make sure that the background layer is not too dark a color. So I've got all my colors down here. You got your grays first, and your primary colors, and then all these different color bands. And I never have good luck picking the color at first. I might just click on one. Oh, well, then I spoke too soon. I kind of like that one. But you, if you're picking colors, you need to be thinking about the color scheme because it can get really too bright really too fast. So right now I'm setting the color of the background because that's what's selected. But if I click off to the side and click this next layer, this next layer, I don't want it, I don't want it to be bright because I'm going to lose my contrast. And I don't want it to be, uh, I might need it to be a little bit darker, but I don't want it to be too dark because i got to be able to go darker steps. Um, so you can say sort of analogous color schemes. All right. Maybe maybe you even do something a little bit more radical and reverse it and get a solarized effect. Take the darkest layer and make it light to give that contrast. Or maybe you just go straight up 
black or almost black. Now, if you're doing this in Inkscape, um, keep in mind that you're going to have to actually have paper that's this color to cut out of, or you're going to need to paint something that's this color um, if you're going to laser cut it and then assemble it again. You can also deal with some translucency. If you're cutting in acrylic, you can do translucent colors and the colors can add with each other. So you can simulate that by setting the opacity. Um, so if I set the opacity of this layer to 50%, the colors will show through. So if I, if I put um, a, you know, a bright layer, the layer underneath it's going to matter for how that pink looks. So you can play around with this and come up with something. You don't want it to get too abstract where you lose the portrait. Okay, this is a little bit too abstract. You can always do Control Z undo to back up. So this is what we're after. I would like you to think about the size. I would like you to think about how many layers. I would like you to think about how you're going to laser cut it. And I would like you to create a portrait of, of someone um, from a picture that you have taken or that one of your relatives has taken. Um, that way you're not just copying off of somebody else's uh image by taking your own original image you're going to end up with something that's more um, original in a final art product okay